I'm here with Mark Truraman, a friend and business partner, actually from South Africa, located in Dubai. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Joel. Mark, we are going with this coronavirus uh, in an unprecedented crisis, at least the, the business impact of the, of the crisis. Is this, what, what is your take on the current crisis? So, yeah, I think, uh, Joel, right now the crisis is just having such a major impact on industry across uh, the globe. We can see various industries, countries coming to a standstill and a halt. Um, you know, it's impacting us globally and uh, in a remarkable way. It's also remarkable to see how leaders are responding. But uh, the interesting thing for me is that quite a few years now, I mean, we've been involved for quite a few years now, we've been involved in uh, digitalization. We've been involved in transformation projects and programs, and I've been uh, involved in them where it's, uh, it comes on the back of, we talk about industrial revolution 4.0. That in itself has been disruption. There's been disruptors of the various industries. We've seen examples of Uber, Airbnb, where they don't own the core assets like traditional hoteliers do and so forth. So we've seen that disruption taking place, which has actually led itself to leaders becoming more flexible, leaders becoming more agile and being susceptible to changing very, very quickly because of all of these uh, changes and disruption that's taking place. So this crisis is on top of that, but we've been preparing as leaders to become more and more flexible. So you mean this is like a disruption on a disruption? Absolutely, yes. So this, is, this is funny to think that what we thought was disruption was in fact a well-planned, stable change, or, and now we suddenly have bang, this, this huge, this serious disruption of the disruption. Uh, yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, you, you are a, a, a project management professional uh, since a very long time, very experienced. You know, I see project managers as being people who have all these tools and systems being very rigid and, and, and bringing structure maybe where it's not even, even always needed. Is, is that all that, that is about product management and, and change in disruption? Yeah, so good question, Joel. I think um, definitely, I think traditionally, first of all, we've been the custodians of process, of uh, change in terms of putting... Somebody has to do that. Huh? To, say again? <laughs> Say Somebody again. has to do that. Huh? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and it pays the bills, right? So, so oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. And somebody has to do it. And somebody needs to keep that structure in place. Somebody needs to keep governance in play. Okay, so things like that. But that's only one part of it. Because of the crisis, because of this crisis, because of disruption, we've now accelerated the need to be more flexible, right? So, but if I look at it, from a uh, project uh, management perspective and professional perspective, one third actually of our entire portfolio or PMI, Project Management Institute in the US have come up with this talent triangle and they talk about one third being technical skill set. And that technical skill set talks about process, methodology, having that structure and so forth. So it's the PM uh, skill set, okay, that we're talking about, technical skill set. But the other two thirds talks about having a strategic understanding. So understanding strategy of an organization, understanding the business management aspects, and also having clear leadership ability. Now, if we look at that, that's already two thirds. So my, my concern, and this is it, if we focus too much just on process and just only on process, then that's just one third. I mean, who goes into battle and tries to achieve something with just 33% artillery, okay? It's, it's unwise to do so. So the thing is, we need to be equipped more and more with leadership skills. We need to be equipped more and more with understanding the business, understanding the strategy, and connecting that to technology, because we have technology experts to do that job. But more and more right now, our jobs in project management is becoming more of managing people effectively 
in, and, and understanding the social aspects, understanding the EQ aspects, i.e. empathy, uh, being able to equip them, you know, with skill sets that they need from, from uh, if I look at uh, conflict uh, resolution, conflict management, okay, and influencing and being able to support that team as a team leader and more on the softer or the people side of things rather than the technical side of things. I, I find this extremely interesting, your, your 66, 33 percent that often we see in project management, but I'm sure it applies to, to marketing, to finance, to many things. We see our tools and our process and our governance to be so important, but in fact, it's maybe, at least in your case, 33 percent. And the success resides in a great part or in the greatest part with the people yeah. skill. Uh, so a very interesting thought to apply in, in, different, in different areas. Now, yeah. if we place people, and again, we are talking about, about disruption time, about crisis time, how does it work to work with people or maximize the people impact in a time of disruption? Yeah, so, so definitely, I mean, having all of this knowledge is good and we, we need to get it to work and get it to work for us effectively, right? So um, quite rightly so, like you're saying, about that 67%, 66%, the thing is this, it's almost like an iceberg, isn't it? Because the chunk and the value is actually in the bottom of that iceberg and that's the core. And that's what we're talking about, that 66%, right? Now, how do we get it to work is there's a concept in, uh, in, in our world, uh, we talk about in Agile, we use a concept called servant leadership. And servant leadership speaks to uh, making sure that we, instead of just being accountable and delegating everything, we actually get more involved. We get more involved and we become responsible for equipping. We become responsible for um, enabling and making sure that what is needed and not just technical, but on the emotional intelligence aspect, making sure that we support our teams, let's say psychologically as true leaders, because that leadership skill is absolutely essential to make sure that we become true servant leaders, that we become responsible for their performance at the end of the day. And it's not just a top down saying you did not perform, but I take accountability, I also step in and I take responsibility to do something to start changing that as a servant leader. Very interesting. I, I, I observed some of those agile teams and realized that there is, you know, how the team feels about it, building the team spirits, celebrating achievements in sometimes yes. areas like software development, for example, that is fairly dry, but it's creating that whole thing around it. And this is... Uh, this is, uh, 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 this is important. Um, yeah. I don't even know where to end up here. <laughs> so, uh, so, so keeping this, uh, okay, I'm going to finish like this. Um, so actually Richard Branson was saying, if you want, uh, you shouldn't put your client first. You should put your employees as the priority and they will take care of your clients excellently. So Mark, thank you very much for your provoking thoughts of placing people first or being a majority part of the, of the focus for success in a time of major disruption or disruption on disruption. Thank you very much.